It's not like two chapters, it's like 10 chapters. What is up everyone? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that are new, hi, my name is Janie and I am an OBGYN resident. I am so happy that you are here. Today, we are going to be doing a little bit of a spin-off of my friend Fabiola Suarez's video on things she wishes she, on things she wishes, on things she wishes, on things she wishes she would have known in college. And my little spin-off is going to be things I wish I knew in medical school. College was a really long time ago for me. Um, I started college about 10 years ago. So that was a really long time ago and I can't really think back to that many things I wish I knew in college. I had a really good time during my college years so I don't have that many regrets. But I do have a few things that I wish I would have done so differently when I was in medical school. So I have gathered a little list of the six things I wish I knew in medical school. So let's get started. Number one is to organize your time. And I've talked about this in other videos before in my productivity video and how to study for the USMLE. Uh, all of those kinds of videos I have talked about organizing your time and it's because I was so bad about organizing my time when I was in my first two years of medical school. For those of you that don't know, medical school is four years and the first two years is basically like a continuation of college where you're mostly in the classroom with some limited clinical experiences. Well, during these years, you are studying a lot, you are having tests, you have a boatload of material that you have to cram for exams and all of those things. So it's crucial that you can organize your time so that you have enough time to read, you need to be able to do questions, you need to sometimes re-listen to lectures, you need to study for different classes, you have homework, you have projects, you have anatomy lab. There is so many other things going on aside from studying and also you kind of want to try to have a life so you want to try to at least get some exercise in if you can and if you have any hobbies you want to try to dedicate at least a little bit of time to that. But if you don't know how to organize your time then you know, you are completely, completely lost. And this is what happened to me. So my first two years, I was trying to figure out what would work for me in terms of studying. And if I had just at least tried to organize my time a little bit better, I probably would have done so, so, so much better during my first two years. I started to learn how to organize my time a lot better when I started studying for my USMLE step one. So I will leave that link somewhere around here. Yeah, that is my number one thing I wish I knew in medical school was how important it is to organize your time. Number two, and this is ridiculous because I also talked about this in my video or survival guide for new interns and residents, but it is that sleep is important. I cannot tell you, I cannot put into words how important it is to sleep. Sometimes during college, you probably spent a few nights where you didn't sleep because you forgot to study for a test and you were like cramming all of the things at the end. But in medical school, it's not like two chapters, it's like 10 chapters. And you can't possibly cram 10 chapters of material in one day. So organize your time, you get to sleep, and if you sleep, you get to do better on your exam. So this I did learn about more so my second year of medical school, that whenever I did an all-nighter and I wouldn't sleep before a test, I would make the silliest mistakes because my brain was so tired that it just couldn't handle it anymore. And sometimes we had two tests on the same day. So when I started noticing that when I was like, you know what, I, ha if I haven't finished by now, if I don't know it by now, it's not gonna make a difference in the morning, then I would go to bed maybe at three in the morning and I would sleep maybe a couple hours, maybe three, four hours at the most. And believe it or not, those three, four hours would make a world of a difference during my exam. I would be able to focus a little bit more. I was able to remember things a lot a bit better and I was also not making silly mistakes in confusing things that looked similar but I clearly knew what the correct answer was. So sleep is a very important not only for residency but also for medical school. Number three is that you need to do questions until you die. 
or until you need to do questions until you can't anymore so questions are basically are questions are going to be the essence of your life for pretty much the rest of your medical career so during medical school you want to learn how to analyze those questions you want to learn how to interpret those questions and you want to learn how to find the correct answer because multiple choice questions give you the answer the answer is right there in your face you just have to you just have to learn how to identify it you have to know what the question is asking you and you need to be able to answer it so i cannot emphasize how important it is to do questions until you just can't anymore U World is a great resource for a reason. So not only for USMLE, but also for your shelf exams and also for your general knowledge because it will help you identify areas where you need to read a little bit more and focus on during those times so that you don't have to cram all of that new information when you sit down and study for step one. That way you will be maximizing your time early on and you will be ready for USMLE when the time comes. So questions until you can't anymore. Number four is one that might surprise you, but grades aren't everything. I know that so many of us were told from day one in medical school that you need to be in AOA, which is the honor society for medical schools. You need to have a 240 or more on your USMLE, and you need to do all of these things, and you need to have honors on all your classes, and that is simply not true. It is not realistic. It puts unnecessary pressure on you to do things in a rush because you want to get it done instead of doing it well. It is better to do it well than to do it fast. It is better to completely know the material and be comfortable with the material than it is to get the perfect score in the exam. It might be hard to understand this if you are right in the middle of your medical school years, but believe me, there are residency spots for a reason. There are different specialties for a reason. And yes, if you want to go into a more competitive specialty like orthopedics or dermatology, you may need higher numbers, but that doesn't mean that if you don't have those numbers that you can't make it. There are people with perfect numbers that do not match. There are people with not the best numbers, not the most impressive, and they end up with a spot. So your numbers aren't everything. Don't let that define you and don't put all that unnecessary pressure on yourself to get a higher number and then feel bad about yourself when you don't reach your goals. The most important thing is that you do your best, that you try to improve every step of the way and that you are learning so that you can give your patients the best care possible. Your patients are not going to care about your USMLE score. So please, 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 if you take anything at all from this video, it is that numbers do not define you. On the same topic or in a similar topic, number five is that USMLE is not everything. Yes, USMLE is important, but it is not everything. It is not necessarily what will make or break your application. For some programs, sure, but maybe that's not the best program for you anyway. So USMLE is a standardized exam. It is a board exam that we need to take uh, in order to be able to obtain a medical license in the United States. It has, it has three, but really four components. The first one is USMLE Step 1. The second one is USMLE Step 2 Clinical Knowledge. The third one is USMLE Clinical Skills. USMLE 2 clinical skills and then the fourth one is USMLE step 3. The first one you take between your second and your third year of medical school traditionally. Both parts of the USMLE step 2 you take during your um, the beginning of your fourth year so between your third and fourth year and then USMLE step 3 you traditionally take it during your intern year of residency. So USMLE is important because a lot of programs use it as a filter to determine which applicants they are going to offer an interview to. So 
if you have a really low score, this may prevent some programs to even see your application. But even though it is important, it is not everything. If you don't do well, if you don't get the 240, if you don't get the score that you want, it doesn't mean that you won't match, it doesn't mean that you won't be a doctor, it doesn't mean absolutely anything. I did not get a great USMLE Step 1 score. And to be honest with you, I had less than a 220. And I know that every year these things change, these numbers increase and it gets more and more competitive. But what I want you to take from this is that it is not everything. What I did, since I knew that my USMLE Step 1 wasn't great, I tried to do better the second time around. And guess what? I had a stellar Step 2 CK. And I did my clinical skills as quickly as possible. And that is pretty much all that you need to get into residency. Step 3, you just need to pass, to be honest with you. And that is pretty much it. There is not that much pressure. It is a lot easier even though it is a longer exam. So don't put all that unnecessary pressure on yourself. And the sixth and final point of this video is that you need to be kind. Um, kindness is something that will take you a really long way in your medical career. Not only with your patients, but with your colleagues, with the nurses, with the maintenance staff, every single person that you come into contact with, be kind. I talked about this in my intern survival guide video again, but I cannot tell you how important it is to be kind. You may be having a bad day, but you don't know if the other person is too. So why would you be rude to them and make their day even worse? Just be kind. Spread kindness and you will receive kindness. I can tell you that I've had patients who have gone through horrible situations and I have been able to be the person that gives them a little bit of hope. And just that, just being kind and giving them the time, listening to them, that made a whole difference for that patient. Same thing for your colleagues. Sometimes they'll need kindness from you. They'll be going through a rough time and it is okay to be supportive. So very, very important it is to be kind. So before we wrap up this video, I do wanna remind you guys, I have some services that I am offering you right now on my website. I have a blog, www.mylifeinmedicineblog.com. And over there right now I'm offering services for pre-meds and medical students. For pre-med students, I am offering personal statement and CV revisions. And for medical students, I am offering the same services in addition to coaching services for your residency application. So if you want to learn more, please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook to learn more. You can also visit my blog. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel down below to be notified every time I upload a new video. So remember to click the little bell. And that is pretty much it for this video, you guys. Thank you so, so much for watching. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys.